Hello everyone and welcome to our second part on Akiva Rubinstein. Uh, I started the first part with, well, undoubtedly his most famous game, the Immortal Rubinstein game, and then, well, possibly his most famous end game, the one with Aleka and with some amazing transposition, either rook end games or pawn end games. Today we will look at three quite simple games, uh, not too heavy analysis, beating three world champions, uh, the current world champion Lasker, that is in 1909 in a very strong tournament in St. Petersburg, then future world champion Capablanca in 1911, he was already quite strong, and Alekhine in 1912, okay, uh, both Capablanca and Alekhine were far away from their peak, we have to be honest about that, but still, great players and if you remember, around this, around this area, uh, you know, uh, 1912, 1914, maybe even 1911, 1914, most likely Rubinstein was the best player in the world and probably the strongest player in history never to have played a world championship match, I believe together with uh, Keres and Ivan Chuk should be in that list and so on. But we will give him, uh, you know, his honor today and beating three world champions. Okay, we will start with his first game against Lasker. It is a bit interesting, the game against Lasker and Capablanca, they are both somewhat of a Tarash opening and Lasker just played it wrong. Uh, let's put it uh, let's put it this way. Just played wrong because he got into a Tarash version. Maybe here just Bishop e seven, take on c four, you know c six, h six, you name it. But getting into this Tarash, no, just bad. White didn't even play g three, which means he can choose lines with e three, easy pressure against c5 and d5 in the normal line. No, g3, bishop, g2 is being played. White never gets to put easily uh, uh, that much pressure on d5 so fast. We, we will see the Capablanca game after that. All right. Take, take. e3. And okay. As I pointed out, just very, very comfortable for White. I think there are other ways, other ways to play. Uh, but I mean, this is a very critical line because it's winning a pawn. But uh, the f next position, well, the one that I will stop is very famous. I, I remember, I remember. I, I think as as a young kid, you know, uh, well, it happened. It it was sometimes something like that that I was given this position and I had to figure out uh, what to play with uh, the white pieces. Actually, uh, I, I, I found what is the correct uh, way to play. So for my, my thousand years old memories, how about anyone that would like can pause here and figure out what you should play for white. I mean, black is threatening to take on e3, of course, and g2. A move like queen d2 is possible, but okay, maybe f5, king b8. I mean, yeah, white is better after queen d2, but still a, a bit under pressure. And of course, the key idea is that if we play queen d2, if black plays bishop take g2, okay, f4 is out there. But... Rubinstein played absolutely best, but he had to see a key move. Okay, rook c1. The main idea is that if king b8, okay, rook c5 may be followed by d5 at some point. Uh, if queen e7, for example, then I believe that queen g4 is a decent move. Okay, if queen b3, 